8.30 in the morning. Yeah, and I'm wide awake. Yeah, we're headed back to the convention center. There's For not, day one of D23. There's not a soul in sight because all those that are crazy enough to be up at this hour for the panel at 10.30 in the morning are already inside. Which we were last time, but we learned and we feel like we didn't have to do it this time, but we will be one of those crazy people waiting in line. Yeah, two, tonight. two overnights in a row is just a little rough, but uh, we're all right doing one and a half. Yeah. Which is what we're doing now. Metal detectors that everyone's gonna have to go through. A lot of metal detectors. This is me. There you go. Make sure you get scanned in and out. Thank you very much, Tracy. You're welcome. There you go. Enjoy. Lanyard. Check. D23 bag. Check. Souvenir guy. Check. Check. So check-in was incredibly painless. So we've got our gold priority seating, which is kind of nice. It's different from two years ago. Yeah, they didn't have that last year. This time, like if you're a gold member, you get priority. Gold seat. member. We extended like five different lanes worth of traffic for gold members. So definitely worth the benefit of uh, paying for your membership. Yeah, along with all the other benefits you do get. A hundred bucks a year. So. But it's up to four people. Is that right? It's a family thing. You have a, a single person for D23, which is good for one person and one, their guests for any events. And, yeah. then, and then you also have a family member, gold which member, is... which covers about three different people beyond yourself. So. Okay. But the cool thing about having that gold membership, we sound like we're pitching for Disney, but you know what? It does come into play in Hall E, because Holly. in Hall E, this entire section is gold membership, <laughs> and everything behind it is not. So it does come into play, especially because we are sitting, uh, currently we are in line for the prime seating to possibly sit in the front. Section C. Bambi, they just killed the mom. And you get to watch Disney movies down here. However, after like the third movie, they just repeat and you start losing your mind when you get to like four, five, six in the morning. But this is nice. It was not hard getting in here at all. I'm actually kind of glad we waited a little later than getting here at like 5 or 6 p.m. like we did last year. Yeah. But it should be fun. Tim and Ashley are almost here too, making their way downtown to... Walk and fast faces. Even though we're nice and early and we got much, not much of a line ahead of us, if you need the merchandise, you still got to get here early because that line was massive. Yeah, so, so the ridiculous. merchandise line is like all the way in the back of the waiting area for Hall D23. They are way back there and there's far more people than there are waiting for the Legends panel. So you can see there's already people all camped out sleeping. So uh, we won't be able to film in the panel, which is different because I thought we could film in Legends last year. We did. Things might change. Yeah, yeah. They put up signs saying, we got scolded for filming, like walking in here by one guy, but everybody else has been really cool about it. So. We'll see. We'll try. But we'll get what we can. Suit and black, so. The suit Minimum in black is a hired security help, so we shall see what the night brings us. Morning. Morning. Now. The thing about this, too. Ah, yes, so the badge. We got our badges, and last year or two years ago, we had like a thing to put, like plastic. slip it in the plastic, and now it's just the actual thing and stuff. So it's like paper. I mean, it's thicker, but. It's kind of eh, because I'm afraid that like when you're running around or when you're walking, could this rip. thing could rip and fall, and you don't have your ticket anymore. And you're screwed pretty much if you lose your ticket. So Bad to me at Comic Con. Need to buy like a pouch or something inside sure. if they even sell them. But yeah, it kind of sucks that they cheaped out. The lanyard too. The lanyard is a little cheaper in my opinion. Yeah, that's but. true because it was like a little thicker. They had to pay to get the entire cast of Civil War here, so. Yeah. <laughs> had to make cuts somewhere. You mean Infinity War? That's what I meant. I was and flashback. I was flashback into two years ago. And Thor Ragnarok with Tom Hiddleston. Hopefully. Loki. Well, look at what we have here. Hey guys, sorry we uh, left you behind. Yeah. I'm glad you caught up. You never go full Disney. 
All right, quick update. Uh, first day, 4.15 in the morning. And we're continuing our Disney movies, but now we're moving on to the Marvel movies with Guardians of the Galaxy. It's getting exciting. It's getting exciting. It's already 4.15. Like, I'm already editing the vlog that you guys are technically watching now, so it's a little bit of bong inception, but yeah, time's flying by a little bit. I can't believe we've already been here for like two hours, so that's exciting. It hasn't really filled up that much. Tim and Ashley are now here, nice and comfortable. I think Ashley, there she is. <laughs> has gone full Disney already. Full Disney. We'll check in in a little while. Stay tuned. We'll be right, movie. we'll be right back. So if you can hear us, now it's Moana. I am Moana! The volume's kind of loud though, they were announcing things over the PA for the people in the back. The line's starting to get a little bit bigger now. <laughs> we're getting close, it is... Six o'clock. Yep. Six o'clock, so we've got like four and a half more hours to go before we get to go into the panel. But that's okay, energy is high, Mountain Dew is flowing. Local time, 8.40 a.m. 8.40 PST. Next on the list? Pirates. Of the Caribbean. The Curse of the Black Pearl. The good the one. Good, yeah, good one. The good one. <laughs> Almost time to go. <laughs> so they just announced that they are gonna, we're going up soon. Uh, the sections A and B have already kind of started going up there, and we're going after, obviously. But it is 9.17, and we're almost there. About to start the Legends panel. We are going in to Hall D23. Up the escalator. It's very dark up there. Yeah, there's no lights. It's uh, very it's dark. <laughs> It's main event time. The Incredible! And we are in. It's so beautiful. What's the reserve spot for? For the legends or everybody that's worthy of sitting in there? So we are in the Legends panel. Amazing. And we... Dick Van Dyke is on the screen. Uh, third row. Third row. my So the cool thing about the Disney Legends as well, at the panel at least, is if you get up close, you actually end up sitting right next to the elite, elite of Disney. We've got Ron Clements and John Musker. Bob Gurr over there, Brad Bird, just more recent legends of Disney in terms of just what he's done for them. And then you got people like Tony Baxter, and then of course you're going to get the CEO Bob Iger, you know, on stage and sitting around there. But some of the who's who of Disney are sitting right there. Over with them. We're proud to include Jack Kirby among our revered Disney legends. We're proud to name Stan Lee a Disney legend for such an extraordinary career and so many great contributions. Ladies and gentlemen, Disney legend, Stan Lee. Nice bring mini goals, come out to socialize. Disney legend, Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill. So please welcome Disney legend, Whoopi Goldberg.
Legends panel. I mean, it's not for everybody in terms of uh, what they offer. I mean, there's no big surprises, really. There's no, uh, you know... No, like, pass out, reviews you know or anything, but it just is to honor those that have done so much for Disney and have done so much in their own work as well. And it's a tearjerker for sure. I mean, they honored Carrie Fisher who had passed away. They honored Gary Martin who passed away. They honored so many of these people who, <laughs> who are no longer a, here. Who, yeah, who have a footprint in Disney and who have this legacy in, of Disney. And uh, it's just so sad. Like, okay, so when Mark Hamill was up there, it was amazing. And then he got so teared. It was a tear trigger at the end because he got so choked up and it, that's when I lost it. I started crying. I was like, no, don't. I'll be there. I'll pet you. It's definitely it's a tear jerker, but uh, we said there's no previews, but there are some really good montages that they put together just of the history of so many of these amazing people that have really kind of brought Disney to where it is now. Yeah. And we are diehard Disney fans for that. Um, I mean, a lot of these people recount how they grew up with like the Sunday night or Sunday episodes of like Wonderful World of Disney, Wonderful World of Color, uh, the comic books, I mean, the, the comics and the Sunday papers, I mean, that Everything. stuff, yeah, that stuff had a huge influence, so, I mean, it is uh, not for everybody, for, for people like us, so it is definitely a must-see. So, Tim, actually, was your guys' first Legends panel, what'd you guys think? I feel so much inspiration and passion just seeing that many people appreciate the innovation that all of these people gave to the Walt Disney Company. It's just, it's really inspiring. I, you know, I, I almost don't have words for it. Um, it was definitely a great experience and I would definitely, it was worth the wait for sure and lack of sleep, so. My biggest takeaway from it was that Stan Lee was given an award tonight, today, not tonight, and as was Jack Kirby, but Stan Lee made, pretty much made his entire, his entire speech about how overjoyed he was that Jack Kirby was being recognized. He didn't even care about the fact that he was getting one. He was talking about Jack, which was, that was my biggest takeaway, because, you know, everyone knows Stan Lee, but, Sometimes these smaller guys like Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko, they get kind of forgotten and lost in the shuffle, but they were equally as important as Stan Lee in the creation of uh, what we see today as you know Marvel Comics, DC Comics, whatever it is. So that was my biggest takeaway, that, that he, uh, he didn't make it about himself, he made it all about his buddy Jack. That was cool. Travis, takeaways. Oh man, I, again, Second Legends panel I've been to, tearful, especially when you get the Legends themselves tearing up. Mark Hamill started to choke up after talking about Carrie Fisher. I had tears crawling, just down. Great, as always, love it. Let's see what, what else we got with D23. You said the same thing about Mark Hamill. <laughs> but that's the thing, is it is, it's very touching, it's very moving, it's a must-see panel if you are any sort of fan of what it took to create the world of Disney. And we respect that and we love it. We'll never miss a Legends panel as long as we come to D23. We were here at three in the morning to get in front of that panel. Now granted though, it's kind of, the seating and the podium and the placement, it's kind of hard, but at least, you know, we may not have been sitting right in front of all these celebrities, but it didn't matter. The energy was there across the room, but we did get to sit next to those Disney legends like Bob Gurr. I mean, I love Bob Gurr. He's so funny. Um, but Richard Sherman was there. Richard too. Sherman, for sure. Um, My favorite, Tony Baxter. Definitely the who's who when it comes to the house maps. So let's see what else we can see at D23 before we go and get back in line again yeah. for the animation panel. Wedding dress from Enchanted. Ah, I love it. I also love the belt. And there's 
bell right there. So in order to get into any of the shops, you have to get in line as well, which is normal for D23. In fact, they give out fast passes essentially to get into the shops. At least they have a system for it. So the party has split up because they wanted to go get uh, posters, exclusive stuff, and we're in line for the animation panel, which is considerably longer than it was two years ago. Oh, um, but we were there like late. Late. That's true. So we were this late to the could have panel. Been there. That's we true. That's true. Fair play to you. There's a possibility to say, oh, yeah, oh, there. Came back pretty quick. But the, the line goes all the way down to B and then all the way back to H, which there's C. Do a couple more letters, you'll get to H. That's where we're headed. But now we're curving around, which scares me because two years ago when we curved around and did a couple loops, we ended up right back where we started because the line didn't know what it was doing and there was nobody navigating it. But this one looks like it's just a small curve, which is okay. But we shall see when we get in. We got those gold passes. Hopefully that'll help. Don't know how it's gonna be in there. The moment of truth, we don't know what it looks like inside the uh, waiting We're area. Gonna We're gonna be fine. Let's see. This. Let's see. This There's is a reveal. Over here. We're fine. This is a reveal. There's nothing. We're, We're fine. It's hot. Looks like there's a cluster F going on here. This is crazy. Everybody's just kind of sneaking around the corner where nobody's checking. And everybody's just basically running in to get in line. This is crazy. Not your membrane. So we made it into the animation panel somehow, and it is quite full. You know, it was a nice, it was a nice, you know, smooth line getting down here. And then as soon as we got down here, it was like mad rush to the yeah. end of this thing where it was open. Yeah, there was nobody over here, and so everyone just kind of ran around the corner and queued up here. Otherwise, we followed. Tons of crowds at section A and section B. Um, but yeah, we got in and we're in the middle of it. Uh, our gold member this has no effect good. here. It has no power here. You have no power over me, like they say in the labyrinth. No power with the gold member. But either way, we're still going to get in. Uh, Christian and all them are out at the food trucks enjoying their time because they got media passes, so they get to just they get to get things like they in. get luxuries like food. <laughs> we have to scrap for our place in line, and then get out and go get in line again because there's already a line forming outside for tomorrow's panel, yes. and it's only like three thirty right now. No, it's one o'clock. Oh, it's only one o'clock. So <laughs> never mind. We've got a ways to go. So all of these phones are going in this sealed non-see-through bag. Granted, it's not sealed right now. We're going to seal them. But that means no filming, no photography, no nothing. I'm like, that's how Disney does it. And we're okay with that because then nothing leaves. It's, it's, it's exclusive to us and uh, we're okay with it. So, in it goes. Signed, sealed, delivered, I'm yours. Is that how the song goes? was basically the keynote the entire time and that was a big change from two years ago where they pretty much brought out every person that was involved for every movie but Lasseter like Bob Iger and some of the other panels ushered it through which got through a heck of a lot faster but they covered quite a bit during this panel so there was a lot to talk about but we'll talk about the highlights things that we really liked and then maybe some of the things we're a little critical on so things that we really liked uh, First thing, oh, go ahead. Oh, go I was first. just gonna say there's a lot of homages to the classic Disney films. We're trying to, but we're trying to keep it spoiler free, so I really want to talk about exactly what I'm excited about, but you'll eventually see. Um, I'm mostly excited for Wreck It Ralph 2. And, and so there's a lot of really cool things in there that I totally was not expecting. Yeah, they introduced um, a new character, yeah. which is awesome. And then there's a lot of things that I was actually 
wasn't surprised that what they showed, I was like, oh, okay, I'm really excited for this movie now. Good, good references. I was crying. Not giving anything away because it's not worth it. It's <laughs> worth it to not say it so that you yes, guys can enjoy you. it when you go see it in theaters. Couple of untitled, which are going to be really cool to figure to see what they figure out. I hold that. Keep going. Carry on. <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of untitled. Well, there's a couple untitled ones. There was one specifically that I'm kind of interested to see where they're going to take it as far as, as an original Pixar movie. And Pixar is really good about having original content, so I'm really excited about this movie. Yeah, essentially it's a fairy tale world in a modern era mixed together, which is kind of cool. It's kind of like Once Upon a Time, but uh, meets how, we, uh, how to Train Your Dragon, I guess, yeah. if you will, if you want to cross studios. Um, with the... Elf movies. Elf! Isn't that what it was? Elf Detectives. The fairy tales. Yeah. That was terrible. Anyway. So, it's basically a modern day story. Story book. Almost like Once Upon a Time meets How to Train Your Dragon. Um, and that one, they didn't show really anything other than a few concept art things. Um, basically, the Ralph breaks the internet and Incredibles 2. Yeah. So there are usually big moments throughout uh, these panels that you walk in and you say, this is amazing. They did an amazing thing. And if you go and read spoilers online, there was a part where they, they did bring out all the princesses who did the voices. They put them out on stage. So that was an amazing moment, I, number one. Oh, it was so amazing because when Jodi Benson came out, I was just like, oh, it's Ariel. And then as soon as she started talking, she was announcing the next princess to come out. And the next princess to come out was Belle. So as soon as she said Belle, I was like, she's all here. with all the princesses and they brought out. all of them. I think the only people that actually weren't there was Idina Menzel and uh, Ming, Ming, no, I just, I just, Mulan. Ming Mulan, Mulan, Mulan wasn't there. And now when? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so huge moment. They all came out on stage and it, it even had uh, Kristen Bell join them. So an awesome moment. If you want to go look at that panel, you can definitely see it probably from D23. Great moment. But, Leading, as I said before, Incredibles. They had to top that moment, and they just kicked it in with Incredibles. Now, the Incredibles, yeah. they didn't have a trailer. They had a lot of concept art. They had a unfinished scene that they showed. Correct. Great. Which was great. Yeah. With Jack and Craig T. Nelson, Very the whole funny. cast came out. They replaced a uh, uh, voice actor for yeah. Dash. For Dash. Yeah. For Dash. Obviously, because Incredibles one his voice. Same thing Why happened with Nemo. Yeah. Right. But essentially, yeah, Sam Jackson was there, which was pretty awesome. Craig T. Nelson, always happy to see them. So the fact that they're moving forward, I think that was probably the biggest pop. Other than, you know, the princesses coming out was the Incredibles cast coming out. Because everyone's waiting for the Incredibles so much, you know, so long. The start of it, the start of the very first clip they showed, boom, right in our face, loud jets, planes, showing new art that they've done. Very glad, very grabbed my attention. It almost looked like it was uh, film, not, not animation. Yeah, it, it really looks impressive. really good. And then to top it all off with something that was awesome, was like towards the end when they were inter or they were talking about Coco, and Coco comes out in November of this year. So they had a lot to promote for that one, and that was amazing. And they had the, some of the cast to come out. The little boy that plays the kid came out. And he sang. It was great. Benjamin and then Bratt came out well, and sang. I have yes. to interject here. So there were some technical problems, microphones squealing. The monitor that was in front of us went out for most of the programs. However, Benjamin Bratt came out, he started singing, and as soon as he finished on the high note, that monitor turned right back on. Benjamin Bratt's voice fixed everything. It fixed the monitor. But very much like Moana two years ago, where that one they brought all the dancers out and it was a big pageantry. It really good had the, the confetti falling down. They did that again for Coco. Thank you so much for the Coco. And they really are pushing Coco in fact. We Ashley was holding it up. I know, I was really excited to have my poster, yeah, we got so I was keeping it close. Poster. It's actually a pretty big poster, Just got but them, it's, so. it's awesome. Yeah. Right. Well, Getting it on the plane is going to be kind of a pain in the butt. I do have one thing that I was a little bit disappointed with. Yes. Uh, two years ago, 
they talked about Toy Story 4. Super exciting, going for it. I was hoping for maybe some footage, some talk art, something giving us a little bit more taste of, you know, some Tom Hanks and Tim Allen perhaps. And my side is, we did get a trailer for Wreck-It Ralph. They showed the trailer before the panel, or at least their segment of the panel started. So you do see them go to the internet world and you see, you know, craziness and there's all these pop-ups walking up saying, you know, oh, you want this, you want this. My critical side on this is what I was worried about when I heard Ralph Breaks the Internet. It reminded me of that segment in Chappelle Show when he went to what would it be like if the internet was a shopping mall and you've got all the people coming up and they're like, oh, debt consolidators, gambling, like popping up. And Funny you said that because the first thing I thought of was the Futurama when they went into the internet. Very, it's kind of a trope that's been done before. However, the part that we're leaving out was a segment that had everybody erupting with laughter, excitement, squealing. I mean, that. Something only only Disney can do for Disney movies. Correct. It really is. Disney is going to be a big part of Wreck It Ralph for sure. The other critique I have on that is that. The part that they showed us felt this place to me, like, pause the Wreck-It Ralph movie, we're gonna focus on this for a while, but, but and we'll fair, get back though, up and running. Be fair, it was just a clip we saw. Correct, out of context really completely. Crazy. But I, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed that clip 100%. It just, to me, was, if I'm thinking about the first Wreck-It Ralph movie, nowhere did it have a place in there, so it felt something that I need to see it in context for it to really hit it home. But other than that, I think that was pretty much it for the, the, the panel. Exciting stuff coming, I think. It's gonna be great. Having uh, uh, Frozen, that is the next part. So, yes. when they first announced Olaf's Frozen Adventure, which is coming out as a 20-some minute short film in front of Coco. Coco. This November. Uh, uh, Kristen Bell came out, technical issues, fake technical issues. That, uh, Josh Gad came out and ended up fixing everything. That and he was, was, uh, it that was, was great awesome. moment. Yeah, it was I a did great enjoy moment. It, it was but, like him mad living to him. It wasn't just that, it was the banter him and Christian Bell had back and forth. This love hate relationship was really great. And that's a good point because with that, when they announced Frozen, you got a little bit of, oh yeah, yay. Oh, but it was like, everyone was like, out. meh. It was them that got the pop and then the banter, and they showed us a pretty lengthy scene from that Olaf short that's coming. Uh, and in that scene, it's the banter, it's the writing. That's why I like Frozen. I don't feel like, woo! I didn't feel like I needed to watch it over and over again, but it's the writing, it's the cleverness of the jokes that they have that I really enjoy. Then they announced, which has already been announced, but they put up the slate for Frozen 2. Untitled, not Frozen 2. John Lasseter said that's not what he wants to call it, and they played with some different names that they would do. But they didn't have they're going to call it Thor. Yeah, they made jokes about the name, but when they said Frozen 2, the kids behind us in the row went crazy. Like, like eight-year-old, nine-year-old kids. Frozen's big with that crowd. So Frozen definitely does have a great... I'm kind of frozen now, but... Just let it go, man. Just let it go. And I will, because I'll, I'll go see Frozen 2. When we see Coco, I'll end up watching that short. I'll laugh, I'll enjoy it. But yeah, Frozen was something that we kind of expected, but it wasn't something that we were excited for, essentially. It was all about Wreck-It Ralph and Incredibles. Um, and, then Coco. And, and we got a little bit of all of it. And then Coco's next up on the slate. Toy Story, obviously missing, but we can't wait to see what they have in store for us tomorrow. But as far as the animation went, it was fun. Best poster we've ever received from D23. Yeah. So, really, really enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun, so. It was good. Alright, thanks for now. Like these guys. Hey, link to the party. You guys were awesome on your debut. Yeah, nice to see you. We were going to get to see. They have a whole lot of this movie that they're working on, and it looks fantastic. There's a little bit of team out It's good. Hair's on point today, sir. Yeah, I like that. I gotta, cut, I gotta cut it here. Are you filming? Yes. Right on. I think the one with the untitled suburban fairy tale, like to me, it, it, it kind of reminded me, like, in a good way, once upon a time, they've had a train 
dragon and putting it together. And so that that would be something more interesting. You know, when he made the comparison to Monster Z, like seeing a world that right. doesn't exist. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's that tomorrow, I mean, if, if that, that opening video got that kind of pop, I can't. I, tomorrow's gonna be crazy. Oh, yeah. they gotta, Jesus, they lost their mind over Mary Poppins. <laughs> I mean, it's they Disney convention. What do you expect? Yeah. Was, no, no, but it was it was mostly Lin Manuel Miranda. He shows up, and he's like, "Oh, we missed you, Mary Poppins." They went fucking bonkers. <laughs> yeah, my he was like, was "I was like, wow." Was but that's the thing. It was funny. How Ellis was wasn't. Little... Yeah, Ellis. Yeah. <laughs> Ellis was like, "Boo!" Hey, I look at him and I go, "They love it." And he's like, oh. <laughs> "Oh my god! Oh my god!" Hey, how are you guys? Good to see you, my man. Everything good? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Everything good? Yeah. yeah. It's always nice to see the show. And it's a little different than two years ago. It feels like almost like equals yeah. versus, you know, even though we still freak out and go crazy. <laughs> and then Mark Ellis, you know, shows This guy, Mark Ellis. And then I come no in. Way. And you know, <laughs> the term attention whore gets thrown around at me. Off. Like, I just need to be in every video. And it's not true at all, you know? It's not true that I just come here to self promote where you guys can find upcoming stand up comedy shows at markelslive.com. It's just not true. <laughs> Tell them all. Where, where are you at next, Mark? San Diego Comic Con in the Charlotte. Gaslight. Oh, no, that's, that's like right, that's that's special. Right. Oh, yeah. Close to the Gaslight. It's actually going to be La Jolla now. So, okay. oh. you got to drive to the rich part of town. He's still going to have Roku there see. for his three to five? If he wants it, he's always got a mic in his stage. What he does with that is up to him. He turned right into a roast on Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> it could turn into a roast on Roku. We don't know how the night's going to go. <laughs> Bring your cute little uh, cowboy hat. It's fun. <laughs> I love you guys. Bye. Bye. See, that's what I'm talking about. Mark Ellis. Guy. They're all cool guys. They're great. I'm sorry, but I want to apologize because he tapped me on the shoulder and this is a fake wall. I kind of fell. So that's why I shook. I'm sorry. Just fry jacked him. We've come to the end of today. It's technically not really ending. It's going to continue on in line for tomorrow's live action panel. But we ended up picking up some food truck food from Delish Devilicious. I've got French fries. We've got a pork belly uh, burrito. That's what I got. And then you've got truffle and then we fries. Got, and I got truffle fries. And then at the very wee bottom, there is a turkey wrap. Yes. I got the turkey wrap. Anyways, we're going to head back to the hotel, recharge the batteries metaphorically and figuratively. Literally. Literally. Right. Recharge the batteries. And then we're going to head back and get in line for tomorrow's live action panel. So it's going to be a long day, night, morning, and then day and night again. So. We will see you guys later. You can like and subscribe. Huh? Sorry. <laughs> you can like and subscribe. And do the thing on our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram. All the social networking joints, you know where they are. And thank you guys, and as always. Now it's time to say goodbye. Bye.